Mark asks, Hey Andreas, it's official. Facebook is giving us global coin early next year. Please put all our concerns to rest and remind us why this will only compete against central banks and fiat currency and not be a threat to Bitcoin. Thanks. Uh, unfortunately, I can't put your concerns to rest. In fact, I've sold all my Bitcoin in order to buy global coin. No, I'm just kidding. Um, fundamentally, the, the thing to understand here is that what Facebook or any company like Facebook is proposing is not a cryptocurrency. Um, it doesn't have any of the fundamental characteristics of cryptocurrency. It doesn't stand on the five pillars of an open blockchain. In fact, it has none of those. So, what are the five pillars that we talked about before? You've probably heard this a few times. An open public cryptocurrency is open, it's public, it's neutral, it's borderless, and it's censorship resistant. And all of these things are characteristics that stem from decentralization of control. Anything that's created by a centralized organization, any centralized organization that can be identified, that exists in a specific jurisdiction, that is subject to specific laws, cannot achieve any of these five pillars. And the reason they cannot achieve is because the law prevents them from doing so. So, first of all, they can't be censorship resistant. Let's start from the end. They can't be censorship resistant because they are legally required to prevent the transmission of funds to certain entities. These entities include sanctioned countries like Iran, North Korea, Venezuela, etc. Um, these include sanctioned entities that are people, companies and people, those listed, for example, on the OFAC list that is run by the U.S. Department of Treasury. You can't send money. Uh, if you, you can actually go find the OFAC list, uh, Google search it. It is a search engine. You can type in a name, and they can tell you if that name is on the OFAC list. Just for fun, type Pablo. Number one name that is going to come up is Pablo Escobar. Um, and you are not allowed. In fact, it is a felony to send money to uh, Pablo Escobar. And that list is long. Uh, how long? Nobody knows, uh, because it is a secret list. And, um, that list is something you are required, if you are a regulated entity, to check against before transmitting payments. So it can't be censorship resistant. In fact, you are required by law to censor certain transactions. And, and these transactions, you know, that list is getting longer and longer and longer. So if it can't be censorship resistant, it also can't be borderless, because you are prohibited from sending money to certain countries, which means that you have to be able to identify both who is receiving this money and where they are. In order to identify who and where they are, um, you have to do know your customer, anti-money laundering, counter-terrorist financing regulations. Essentially, you start behaving like a bank. Uh, anybody who implements a payment system that's centralized has to follow all of the rules of a money transmitter or bank. At that point, you're no longer neutral. The protocol itself cannot be neutral because neutrality means any sender, any recipient, any value, regardless. And the protocol does not care where you are, who you are, what you're doing with that money, and why. And a regulated ent entity cannot not care about all of those questions. They have to ch check all of those things. Who are you? Where are you? What are you doing with that money? And where did it come from? And you may notice those are very specific questions. You've probably recognized your bank has probably asked you some of these questions. One of the exchanges you're dealing with has probably asked you some of these questions. What is your income? Show us your ID. Which country are you in? Are you an American? Etc. Etc. So, and this applies across the world. And every jurisdiction has different rules, which means that you can't be borderless in another way. You know, Facebook operates as a borderless company in many aspects of its operation. Money is not one in which it can do that. It can do that with content um, through various protections of the law. And even that results in Facebook being blocked and banned in a number of authoritarian countries. But to try and follow the payment regulations for two billion customers who are split in 194 countries um, is a morass, and it would result in the same kind of problems that PayPal has. You know, why is PayPal not a global company that serves 194 countries equally? 
because they can only serve 20 or 30 countries equally. And even there, they have to do all of these things because they became a bank. They're not censorship resistant. They're not borderless. They're not neutral. And they can't be public either. Um, because they can't make all of this information publicly available, because that would violate various laws. Now they've got a lot of privately identifiable information about owners of money. They can't make any of that available publicly. They can't create public APIs. They can't create public transparency reports. They can't do any of that because of all of the laws that apply to the secrecy of financial information. And as a result, most importantly, they cannot be open. They cannot give you access to this to send it or receive it outside of their platform. They cannot allow you to extract it from their platform. They cannot allow you to sell it to someone else without them being an intermediary. They will have to sit in the middle and control every transaction. They're not open, they're not public, they're not neutral, they're not borderless, they're not censorship resistant. They're not a cryptocurrency. They're a bank. They're a bank just like PayPal and JP Morgan Chase. Now, they're going to be a very large, multinational, very powerful bank with a lot of users. So banks should be really scared because when technology companies start playing in banking and they have all of these users and all of this experience in technology, that creates some real challenges um, for banks. Because even though Facebook cannot be as open, as borderless, as neutral, as censorship resistant as a cryptocurrency, they can certainly be more open, um, more borderless, and reach more countries than JP Morgan Chase. And they start off with more users. Um, so that should be scary for all of the existing financial services companies. It should also be scary for some authoritarian regimes that will try and fail to block Facebook, um, and then try legal shenanigans, and again, probably fail. Uh, or face an army of lawyers. So this does affect central banks as well, especially central banks in, in countries that have uh, problems. It does affect fiat currencies because it's going to force banks to, um, to basically modernize. And so again, all of these legal restrictions are going to get challenged, of course, which is going to probably make the banking system more open, and that's a good thing. Uh, but it can never be a cryptocurrency, and it can never be uh, as open uh, as Bitcoin or any of the other open, borderless, public, neutral, censorship-resistant cryptocurrencies. So I'll hold what I have, uh, because to me this is not about convenience of payment. This is not about access to a two billion user base. This is about being able to be free, to hold my own money, to not have anyone be able to freeze it, censor it, tell me who I can transact with, or when I can transact, or how I can transact, or what I can transact for. That freedom is at the core of cryptocurrency, and that freedom is the one thing that you can't do with this global coin.